Why, hello there YouTube and welcome to a revolting review. I am Random Ross and today I review Insidious Chapter 3. <laughs> So this is the third installment in the Insidious franchise that is written and directed by Lee Whannell. Yes, he makes his directorial debut with this third film. And of course it stars Dermot Mul Mulroney, uh, Stephanie Scott, Angus Simps Sampson uh, and Lee Whannell of course. Both of those two reprising their roles with Lynn Shea who also returns as Elise. So this third instalment is a prequel to the first Insidious film, taking place, uh, you know, before the events of the first film. About uh, I can't remember how long now—a month or so, a year or so—before the Lambert hauntings. And we focus on this young girl, this teenage girl named Quinn, played by Stephanie Scott, who is, you know, wanting to like get into like this performing arts school thing and you know there's also sort of like you know suffering well you know sort of trying to get over the grief the loss of her mother believing her ghost is there with her and then she suffers an accident where she survives but breaks both her legs in the accident and of course she starts having these visions and connections to the further and uh, then, you know, even also earlier on in the film, she seeks the help of Elise, who asks if she could contact her mother for her. And then eventually she does agree to help her with the help of her two gentlemen. Well, no, in this one, we've been a prequel. Those two guys are both, um, you know, paranormal investigators but they don't believe in the whole paranormal stuff they're just there because they think they can make a book or two but then soon when they you know when Elise comes in you know they soon realize that the paranormal is very real and then that's how their partnership starts so we see how the partnership between Elise and those two guys came about but also we see Stephanie Scott's character Quinn going through you know this whole trauma with the fervor and how her body could get is getting possessed by these evil forces and what have you and then there's her father played by Dermot um, Mul Mulroney am I pronouncing his name right anyway yeah they you know that's what happens in this story with supernatural jump scares and horror etc and then of course the film ends where we get a quick glimpse of lipstick face but doesn't quite go back to the first one as we find out from the fourth film anyway yeah enough with the plot what did I like about this one well I actually thought this was an enjoyable one uh, this came out on my birthday the year it came out June 5th 2015 so I went to see it a couple days after my birthday because on that year of my birthday I went to see the film spy but that was the next one on my watch list, Insidious Chapter 3, and I went to see it, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, there were scares that were predictable and I saw coming, but I will admit, when I first watched it, there was one jump scare that actually did get me with the window, and I actually admitted that one did make me jump. But after that, yeah, uh, you know, but still, kudos to them making me jump at least once. Um... And I thought the you know, this was a nice prequel. Well, I'm thinking about the story with the Lamberts concluded. They thought, shall we go, you know, further into this? But Elise now a ghost and that. But then I thought, you know what? Let's go back and bring Elise back from. Well, let's have this be a prequel. Um, and like I said, this was Lee Winnell's, I believe, directorial debut. Uh, he'd written the first two with James Wan, who directed the first two, just like he did with uh, Saw. He wrote Saw with James Wan, and then James Wan directed it, and in them films, he featured in them, but in this one, you know, he takes full, you know, duties of directing and writing, and I think he did a good job of doing that, you know, as well as performing in it too. And I like the whole backstory it fills on Elise and those two guys I can't I need to learn their names 
Uh, and yeah, I liked that, you know, how their partnership started. Uh, I also thought Lin Shea was great in this, playing Elise. I thought she, you know, you know, this is where she starts to... In this one, I feel this, you know, gives her the opportunity to shine. Because in the first two, she was like there, a medium, helping about. But in this, we get to see her go into like beast mode. When she goes into the fervor, she's like, you know, starts taking them down like she's having none of it anymore. And she does all she can to save Quinn and help her. And I like that, you know, there was good character development between all them lots. I also like Stephanie Scott playing uh, Quint. She was, you know, very beautiful in this and played a good teen even though she was like 19. Well, yeah, still a teenager at that time. But uh, yeah, she, she did great in this and, you know, having to spend quite a bit of the film in casts, uh, you know, pretending to have broken arm, legs and a broken arm with the accident she endured in that film, but still she was she did a great performance I think in this you know it was a film that introduced me to her and she's quite I've only seen her in a few other films I probably should see more of her filmography uh, but we also got uh, Dermot Mulroney who again I've seen in a, quite a dozen films the most recent one probably being Scream 6 um, he was good as the dad character in this. Also, you know, Stephanie Scott's character had a younger brother, I think, in this. Yeah, and um, not much on him. But still, this film was, you know, a good prequel. Sometimes it's hit and miss with these sequels and prequels, but I feel that the Insidious series, you know, takes their time with the sequels and, you know, make sure that they don't just make it for the sake of making it, like, pumping one out year after year you know because we had a four year break between the first two insidious films there was only a two year one with this one but this one i didn't mind it being a prequel uh, i actually thought it was quite good and definitely one of my the better ones in this series so yeah um, I mean, do I have any dis... Well, like I said, there were moments that were predictable, like I could see the jump scares coming and stuff, but still, the, you know, the fact that it made me jump at least once on first viewing, I thought was, you know, a delight. This was, you know, a good, uh, a good prequel. A good, uh, you know, little origin story for, you know, our three secondary characters, well, our three characters that you know, were like sort of secondary characters, they weren't the full main focus, but we get to see them, you know, shine in this one. So, what am I going to rate this one? You know what, it's an enjoyable prequel. I, I, I don't know if I like it more than the first two, but still, solid. So, I'm going to give Insidious Chapter 3, um... You know what, I'll give it I'll give it four fat stabs out of five. Four stabs out of five for Insidious Chapter 3. You know, so there you go. There's my next stop in my build-up to Insidious the Red Door coming out in July. So we've got one more movie now. One more movie before we get to the uh, you know from my retreads of the films. So anyway, yeah, there you go. Have you seen Insidious Chapter 3? Do you like it better than the others? Let me know down in the comments below what you think to it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and to share with your friends. And feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to hit that notification bell. I've been Random Ross and this has been a revolting review on Insidious Chapter 3. So until next time, don't have nightmares.